As the frigid embrace of winter enveloped Europe in the final months of 1944, the thunderous clashes that had rocked the continent started to dwindle in intensity. Following their remarkable breakthrough from Normandy, the Allied forces were now establishing a foothold near the formidable German border. As the Wehrmacht, once a formidable force, now found itself weakened and demoralized, the Allies sensed that victory in Europe was within reach, a matter of time. However, amidst this seemingly inevitable triumph, there remained a man whose determination and rage should never be underestimated, Adolf Hitler. Ignoring the advice of his advisors, who urged him to prepare for the defense of Germany, the Führer made a fateful decision, to launch a last, cataclysmic German offensive in the midst of World War II. As December 15 arrived, an air of complete surprise enveloped the Allied troops. Just the day prior, the 21st Army Group commander, Bernard Montgomery, had boldly declared, the limitations in German manpower, equipment, and resources make offensive actions on their part highly unlikely. The unsuspecting Allied newcomers had been lured into a deceptive calm, unaware that a tempest of thunderous fury was brewing on the horizon. Suddenly, an unexpected German force descended upon the American troops with such overwhelming strength and numbers that it felt as though they had materialized out of nowhere. In this fresh blitzkrieg onslaught, an unremitting assault unfolded, forging an indomitable German thrust that devoured the Ardennes as the American frontline crumbled. Yet, amid this tumultuous upheaval, a symbol of unwavering resolve emerged. Nestled deep within the icy expanses of Belgium's Lanzarath Ridge, Laubach Jr. and his valiant band of 18 comrades refused to concede. United, these intrepid American fighters faced an extraordinary challenge, holding their position against an overwhelming battalion of more than 500 German troops. If they succeeded, their efforts had the potential to disrupt Hitler's grand strategy entirely, setting off a chain reaction that would resonate throughout the war's remaining chapters. It was a final, desperate surge. Following the decisive defeat of the German forces at Stalingrad on February 2, 1943, the Red Army's march appeared inexorable. As the relentless Soviet forces pressed forward with their seemingly endless supply of manpower and a fierce desire for retribution, the year 1944 neared its end. Hitler faced the grim reality that Berlin might fall to the Soviet advance unless a stroke of strategic brilliance could redirect German forces from the Western Front to defend the East. Nonetheless, the circumstances in the Western Front were hardly any less grave. The mighty Western Allies had reached the threshold of Germany with a brilliant breakout from Normandy. However, in Hitler's perception, these forces were more prone to division compared to the United Red Army. The German dictator believed that the alliance between Britain and the US was fragile and that a single decisive strike could shatter the delicate bond, potentially persuading America to consider a peace agreement. Germany hoped to focus its remaining forces on countering the Soviet threat, a daunting task given the unfavorable circumstances. With strategic resources exhausted, manpower dwindling, and equipment in shambles, the prospects of launching a successful offensive were becoming increasingly daunting for Germany. The impending challenge would require the complete and unwavering dedication of all the remaining German troops stationed on the Western Front. The strategy ahead was distinct, Hitler intended to revive the very tactics that had proven highly effective for years prior. This involved launching a lightning-fast offensive through the Ardennes region, led by his most formidable force, the 6th Panzer Army. In a bold move, the German forces planned to breach the American defenses in the Ardennes, cross the formidable River Meuse, and seize control of Antwerp. This audacious strategy aimed to split the Allied front, pushing them into a predicament reminiscent of the Dunkirk evacuation. The outcome of this audacious maneuver hung in the balance, poised on a knife's edge. Success for the Germans could deal a devastating and demoralizing blow to the Allies, compelling them to reassess their dedication to the war effort. Alternatively, they had the choice to deplete the remaining strength of the Wehrmacht entirely, rendering them susceptible to an unrelenting Allied invasion of Germany. Hitler wasted no time contemplating a defensive strategy, he went all in, launching the formidable Ardennes offensive without hesitation. The historical event etched in history as, the Battle of the Bulge, became synonymous with an extraordinary tale, the gathering of the unseen army. The element of surprise loomed large in the Ardennes offensive strategy. Success hinged on persuading the Allies that the Germans were utterly incapable of mounting an assault. In their pursuit of this goal, the German military orchestrated the movement of vast numbers of soldiers who silently navigated through dense forests during the cover of night. When daylight broke, they sought refuge in nearby villages and towns, cleverly hiding their vehicles inside barns or disguising them amidst the natural surroundings. 
This meticulous strategy left no trace of an emerging enemy presence for the vigilant eyes of Allied warplanes scanning the landscape. Little did the German soldiers know, they were unwitting participants in a covert mission, shrouded in secrecy. The intricate plan was concealed even from their regimental leaders until the last possible moment. Only the highest echelons of the German command possessed knowledge of this offensive, and even among them, many senior officers advised Hitler to allocate their dwindling troops and resources toward defending Germany instead. Little did the German soldiers know that they were unwitting participants in a highly classified mission, shrouded in secrecy until the very last moment. Even their regimental commanders were kept in the dark about the intricate plan. The knowledge of this offensive was confined to the highest levels of the German command structure, where some senior officers advised Hitler to allocate the dwindling troops and resources towards the defense of Germany. English-speaking German agents, operating covertly, unleashed chaos upon the Allied forces. They meticulously disrupted supply routes, communication hubs, and road signs, effectively causing havoc and disarray during the critical hours leading up to the impending attack. Astonishingly, they succeeded in diverting an entire Allied regiment from its intended course. In a synchronized effort, a separate special operations unit carried out Operation Stosser, a daring nighttime parachute drop deep behind Allied lines. Their objective, to seize control of a crucial road junction near Malmedy, Belgium. The remarkable success of the Germans' overall clandestine deployment cunningly misled the Allies, leaving them with a deceptive sense of security. The Allies struggled to piece together the puzzle of the German special operations, which unfolded with incredible speed despite challenging circumstances. This rapid mobilization pushed the Wehrmacht supply lines to their limits, but the Germans believed it was a now-or-never situation. As the tension mounted within and beyond the Allied lines, American and British troops, completely unaware, went about their routines, completely oblivious to the impending storm. It was the fateful morning of December 16, 1944, when the German army received the green light to initiate what they believed would be a cataclysmic blitzkrieg, a final assault upon Europe. A daring dawn offensive on the morning of December 16, the 6th Panzer Army, led by the notorious Sepp Dietrich, executed a bold and unforeseen assault on American positions. This surprise attack left many American soldiers in their tents, frantically reaching for their rifles and gear, as German tanks ruthlessly surged and overran their defenses. Contrary to Hitler's directives, Otto von Manchufel and the 5th Panzer Army chose a more covert strategy instead of commencing the attack with a massive artillery bombardment. They silently crossed the Sauer River to catch the unsuspecting Americans off guard. The sudden and ruthless assault left numerous inexperienced U.S. recruits in a state of absolute terror. As the events unfolded, panic gripped many, leaving them in a state of utter terror. According to eyewitness accounts, some were so overwhelmed by fear that they found themselves huddled in fear. In a mere moment, the Ardennes frontlines underwent a nightmarish transformation, catching the Allies completely off guard. The German forces swiftly secured decisive victories, relentlessly breaking through one Allied position after another, and masterfully advancing deep into French and Belgian territory. With their new and singular mission, they found themselves tasked with an unwavering duty, to defend the area at any price, holding on to the slim thread of hope that reinforcements would swiftly join their ranks. Bauk, in a later interview, shared his perspective, our training had not prepared us for occupying the front lines in a defensive role. We were accustomed to patrolling and gathering intelligence about the enemy. However, the task ahead would demand extraordinary efforts. A final opportunity for German triumph, while the American forces steeled themselves for what lay ahead, across the battlefield, the German 9th Regiment readied themselves for their critical assignment, leading the charge of the 6th Panzer Army to capture the village of Lanzarath and reduce it to ruins. The German leadership decided to preserve their limited armored vehicles for future, more challenging engagements. They believed that the infantry from the 9th Regiment possessed the skills necessary to capture the small village obstructing their path and eliminate any isolated American units in the vicinity. At this stage of the conflict, German units consisted of a blend of battle-hardened veterans and a significant contingent of inexperienced young recruits who had little familiarity with firearms. In the midst of the Normandy invasion, the battle-hardened German 3rd Falschirmger Division, renowned for its combat prowess, found itself facing a significant depletion of its ranks. To bolster their forces and uphold German morale, the division was reconstituted with fresh recruits drawn from Luftwaffe field regiments. 
These newly minted soldiers were armed with cutting-edge weaponry, including the versatile STG-44 selective fire rifle, along with rifle grenades and an array of other formidable armaments. Nevertheless, they remained inexperienced and, influenced by the relentless propaganda machine of Nazi Germany, believed that American soldiers were deeply demoralized and reluctant to engage in combat. Among the newly reorganized 3rd Falschirmger Division, it fell upon the 9th Regiment to spearhead the assault on Lanzarath and secure the village. Their next move took them to the towns of Hansfeld and Bullingen, where they anticipated encountering the majority of U.S. troops. Leading the charge, the 6th Panzer Army, with Kampfgrupp paper in the vanguard, was poised to launch an immediate assault. Their target, the crucial path through Lachimergerben, to be attacked right after securing Lanzarath. Despite Germany's recent setbacks and the daunting pressure of fighting on two fronts against foreign forces, the spirits of these German soldiers remained unwavering. They regarded themselves as the last line of defense for their homeland, ready to defend it at any cost. In their letters home, the German soldiers of that era expressed an unexpected optimism and unwavering resolve. They held a strong belief in the possibility of victory and saw their progress as relentless. The German troops pressed forward through densely forested terrain. 500 soldiers from the 9th Falschirmger Regiment and 50 more from the Fusilier Regiment marched confidently, oblivious to the imminent nightmare that a small American platoon was about to unleash upon them. As the 9th Regiment pressed forward, they were well aware of the immense force behind them, a staggering assemblage of over 500,000 troops, 1,400 tanks, and 2,400 warplanes, all poised to unleash the final fury of the Third Reich. As they pushed forward at breakneck speed, covering almost 60 miles within the initial days, the notorious German bulge emerged in the front line, marking the beginning of a grueling and harrowing ordeal for everyone present. Nevertheless, among the Allied fighters, not all were newcomers to the front, and not all yielded to fear. Amidst the mayhem and devastation, a chosen few American soldiers displayed unyielding bravery and resilience. As the hours unfolded, their unwavering courage and unyielding resolve etched an indelible mark in the annals of history. These 18 American servicemen, united as brothers in arms, comprised the 394th Intelligence and Reconnaissance Platoon. While they may have been relatively inexperienced, they were an elite group entrusted with a mission in the perilous Ardennes region. Among their ranks were college-educated graduates of the now-discontinued Army Specialized Training Program, a preparatory initiative that had honed their skills in engineering, foreign languages, and medicine. Leading the platoon was Lt. Lyle Bauck, a remarkable 20-year-old officer, one of the Army's youngest. The platoon consisted of two reconnaissance squads, each comprising nine skilled men. While their forte was surveillance, they lacked the gear for direct combat with the Germans. Their primary mission involved specialized intelligence gathering, focusing on enemy coordinates and troop strength, which they diligently relayed to the regimental intelligence officer. They efficiently managed patrol vehicles and observation posts, orchestrating intelligence operations throughout the regiment. Their headquarters was a sturdy brick building located in Hunningen, Belgium, near the German border. Interestingly, the basement doubled as a storage area for military combat rations. However, everything changed on that fateful morning of December 16 when both squads detected a formidable German advance in a nearby town. The American troops found themselves in a precarious situation, isolated from higher headquarters and facing severe disruptions in communication. There was no sign of any additional support on the horizon. At that moment, most American forces in the vicinity were engaged in assaulting the Siegfried Line near Wallershield, which was just five miles north of the platoon's location. While they had expected a counterattack, the overwhelming size of the German force far surpassed anything they had imagined. Earlier military reports had painted a bleak picture of the Wehrmacht's condition. However, as the imposing enemy force advanced towards the American lines, confusion reigned among the GIs as they struggled to comprehend the sudden appearance of these formidable formations. With unwavering resolve, Lt. Bauck and his team made the decision to construct defensive positions atop the hill at Lanzarath, situated on the forest's fringe, commanding a sweeping view over an expansive pasture. Utilizing the abandoned foxholes from a previous battalion, they excavated further, expanding the dugouts to house more troops. 
Hidden beneath layers of pine logs, their location dominated a 300-yard segment of the ridge's northeastern edge. This vantage point provided them with a distinct advantage, overlooking the junction in the road to their left. Amidst the falling snow, the American soldiers skillfully melded with the wintry landscape, their presence veiled from the watchful gaze of the enemy below. They took refuge in a rustic log cabin nearby, using it as a shelter from the cold, and armed themselves with an array of formidable weaponry provided by Bauk. This arsenal comprised extra carbines, automatic rifles, and a nimble light machine gun. Bauk's resourcefulness didn't stop at the acquisition of a powerful 50 caliber machine gun mounted on a jeep, it marked the beginning of their formidable arsenal. The platoon displayed great attention to detail as they strategically positioned the jeep, making sure it held a significant advantage over the road. They established a tight schedule of jeep patrols, ensuring continuous contact between the flanks and vigilant monitoring of enemy movements. This group, initially meant to serve as the eyes and ears of the 394th Infantry Regiment, found themselves thrust into a challenging role for which they were hardly prepared. Amidst the frigid night and the thick blanket of snow that had descended upon the battlefield, the American soldiers hunkered down in their deep foxholes, rendering their positions nearly imperceptible to the advancing Germans. Though the enemy was aware of the direction from which the gunfire emanated, they found themselves incapable of mounting a precise counterattack. In the face of this perilous predicament, Lt. Bauk remained resolute, resolved to exhaust every last bullet in defense, all while the ominous specter of the 1st SS Panzer Division loomed ever closer. As the relentless enemy fire continued, the I and our platoon faced an inevitable consequence, their radio was destroyed, severing their last connection to the outside world. Amidst the fading light in the war-ravaged, frigid Ardennes forests, their dwindling ammunition supplies and the inability to reach regimental headquarters left the American fighters with a grim realization, they were unlikely to survive their ordeal on Lanzarath Ridge. As the tension mounted during the last stand, the German soldiers faced a daunting challenge. Gradually, they shifted their tactics, moving away from direct frontal assaults to adopting cover positions along the roadside ditches. With rifles aimed at the American foxholes, a deafening cacophony of gunfire erupted, creating a relentless exchange of bullets between the two opposing forces. The defenders grew increasingly apprehensive with each shot fired from the American guns, as their dwindling supplies added to their mounting worries. Amidst the snow-covered terrain, the Germans relentlessly launched one assault after another. Their frustration grew as the American platoon, though significantly outnumbered, seemed to vanish in the wintry landscape. The superior defensive position of the American troops took a heavy toll on the Fallstürmger regiment. The intense firefight unfolded between the 18 American soldiers and the overwhelming group of 500 Germans, continuing unabated for hours on end. In the midst of battle, amidst the rising smoke and the acrid scent of deal would stretch on endlessly, with no assistance in sight. Hopelessness hung heavy in the air. As exhaustion gnawed at them, and their ammunition dwindled dangerously, Lt. Bauk embarked on a desperate quest for reinforcements or an official order to withdraw. Yet, as Bauk prepared to initiate a tactical withdrawal, the Germans displayed their cunning tactics by outflanking the small American platoon, infiltrating their positions, and overwhelming their defensive foxholes. Interestingly, even though the Germans achieved a measure of victory, their losses did not abate. As they secured the ridge, a number of their soldiers fell victim to concealed American fighters who had rigged grenades to wires, catching the attackers off guard and exacting a toll on their ranks. Years had passed since most German troops had witnessed such an extensive German offensive. They were filled with exhilaration at the prospect of turning the war's tide in their favor and realizing the dream of a thousand-year Reich. Little did they anticipate that their aspirations would be dashed by a mere two dozen American soldiers. This gripping tale unfolds during the Battle for Lanzarath Ridge. The ominous sound of a two-hour rolling barrage marked the commencement of the assault. 
Crouched in their foxholes, the I and our platoon braced themselves, clenching their teeth as the ground shook beneath them. Remarkably, the foxholes offered just enough protection, and the platoon emerged from the ordeal, for the most part, unharmed. Their momentary relief was abruptly shattered when they realized that the German soldiers had severed their communication lines, plunging them into isolation with no means to request reinforcements. Faced with this dire situation, the regiment hastily transmitted orders to the platoon, instructing them to maintain their position and dispatch a scouting party. As the patrol stealthily maneuvered through the desolate terrain, a chilling sight unfolded before their eyes, a formidable German infantry force, bathed in the eerie radiance of colossal searchlights, was steadily advancing near Losheim. At the break of dawn, Bauch's keen eyes caught sight of an imposing sight, a procession of approximately 500 German troops approaching them. The odds were beyond belief, just 18 men against this overwhelming force. Bauch knew that a decision had to be made, and he swiftly reached out to regimental headquarters. His request was clear, to withdraw and employ a delaying tactic. However, the orders he received were resolute, hold their ground at any expense and await reinforcements from the 3rd Battalion. As the German soldiers pressed forward, Bauch swiftly deployed some of his troops to take up defensive and observation posts across the area. Tensions escalated in the village as American soldiers found themselves in intense confrontations with the advancing German forces. The German troopers, driven by unwavering zeal, were marked by their inexperience and overconfidence. However, their unchecked enthusiasm would soon exact a costly price. During a remarkable episode, Krieger, a brave American soldier, found himself in a solo confrontation against a formidable German platoon. Armed with the formidable 50 caliber gun mounted on his jeep, he took on the enemy single-handedly. Meanwhile, on the ridgetop, Bauch and his platoon were gearing up for a surprise attack against the advancing German forces. A twist of fate intervened when a young girl from the nearby village unknowingly exposed the Americans' position, inadvertently alerting the Germans to their presence. Upon sighting the Germans, the American platoon swiftly sought refuge, leading to a fierce clash with the advancing German infantry. Facing overwhelming odds, the American troops fortified their positions, drawing strength from their battle-hardened skills and a well-practiced strategy they had honed with precision. Amid the frigid battle that unfolded, with each passing moment resembling a relentless barrage of bullets, the American soldiers found themselves startled by the unseasoned strategies adopted by the German forces. The Germans charged directly, huddled together in the open, a move that struck the Americans with a mixture of surprise and disbelief. In the aftermath, certain American soldiers would compare the experience to what they had heard of as shooting clay ducks in California at an amusement park. As the field stretched before them, a barbed wire fence standing at four feet high became a formidable obstacle for several German soldiers. They attempted to climb over it, but the snow quickly bore witness to their mounting casualties. Amidst this chaos, the Americans demonstrated a moment of compassion, permitting German medics to approach under a white flag and tend to the wounded. However, their vigilance remained unwavering, and at the slightest hint of suspicious activity, they resumed their relentless fire. Throughout that day, the American platoon fiercely defended their position, dealing the German forces a series of devastating blows that left them humiliated and defeated. Surprisingly, the Germans didn't eliminate the defenders in their current positions. Instead, Bauk found himself forcibly pulled away from his post by a German officer wielding a machine gun. It was apparent that the Germans were eager to locate the whereabouts of other American soldiers. With no response to offer, Bauk believed his life was nearing its end when the officer pressed the weapon against his back and squeezed the trigger. However, in a near-miraculous turn of events, the gun merely clicked, it had run out of ammunition. In that fateful moment, Bauk and the German officer both found themselves struck by enemy bullets. The German officer's injuries were severe, while Bauk's calf was grazed by a bullet. Seizing control of the chaotic scene, German Sergeant Vince Kulbach took Bauk aside and posed a crucial question, who was in command? Bauk's response, claiming leadership with just 18 men, left Kulbach astonished. As they were escorted away, Lieutenant Bauk couldn't grasp the gravity of their actions. Their capture felt like an overwhelming defeat, and he would carry the heavy burden of self-blame for not retreating sooner, which led to the capture of his men. The future looked bleak, mirroring the grim destiny that had unfolded during their final stand on Lanzarath Ridge. 
Following their evacuation from the battlefield, the surviving members of the I and our platoon faced a challenging journey. Those who could still walk were dispatched to Germany, while the gravely wounded were carefully placed onto trucks and eventually loaded onto trains. Bauk found himself sharing an uncomfortably cramped railroad cattle car with 71 other POWs, enduring days of travel without access to food or water. As Christmas approached, the harsh reality set in as seven men in Bauk's car tragically lost their lives, leaving the remaining survivors clinging to life by the most fragile of threads. As the prisoners were transferred to medical facilities in Frankfurt and Hanover, their fate took a somber turn. Once they arrived at the POW camp, an audacious attempt at liberation was undertaken by Task Force Baum from General Patton's 4th Armored Division. However, Captain A. Baum, the leader of this daring mission, was faced with an unexpected challenge. The sheer magnitude of the imprisoned soldiers proved overwhelming, preventing him from rescuing every single one of them. Amidst the daring mission, the majority of Baum's unit found themselves in the clutches of the enemy, while Bauk was briefly recaptured, only to regain his freedom a mere week before the war's conclusion. Depleted and mentally drained from enduring a harrowing ordeal, Bauk's condition was so critical that he required hospitalization for several months after the war's end. Despite his physical and mental tribulations, he remained unconvinced that his men had achieved anything truly remarkable. In hindsight, he contemplated, quote, in those foxholes, our primary goal was survival, doing whatever it took to make it through. As time passed and the war's conclusion was thoroughly examined, Bauk began to grasp the significance of their deeds on that crucial day. It came to his knowledge that they had strategically concealed a complete unit from the 1st Battalion of the 9th Falsturmger Regiment, part of the formidable 3rd Falsturmger Division, comprising approximately 500 soldiers. This astute move allowed the diminutive American force to disrupt the progress of the 6th Panzer Army as it advanced towards Antwerp, altering the course of one of the war's most critical and protracted conflicts. As the clock struck for 30 in the morning on December 17, a delay of over 18 hours had pushed the 1st SS Panzer Division far behind their planned schedule. Their destination was Buchholz Station, and this delay had dealt a significant blow to the entire German advance toward the River Meuse and Antwerp. This setback afforded the Americans valuable hours to bring in much-needed reinforcements. The timing of this delay played a pivotal role in shaping the ultimate result of the Battle of the Bulge. It afforded the Allies the vital opportunity to reassemble their forces and effectively respond to the German offensive. Although it would take several years for their actions to receive the recognition they rightfully deserved, every veteran who fought at Lanzarath Ridge was eventually honored with the prestigious Presidential Unit Citation. Among them, four were honored with the Distinguished Service Cross, while five were awarded the Silver Star. Additionally, nine individuals received the Bronze Star with AV device for their unwavering bravery during a grueling 10-hour battle against a formidable 500-man German battalion. These remarkable men, whose names are eternally inscribed in the annals of history, ensured that Bauk's platoon would forever hold the distinction of being the most decorated unit of its scale throughout the entirety of World War II.